the uh, outcome of this conference on the global financial crisis and its impact on development. Um, this was a global conference, all countries of the world represented, and uh, there was a global consensus on how we address what is a global economic crisis. And it's been a very constructive occasion in the sense that it's built upon the outcome of the G20 conference in London uh, earlier this year, uh, and it will be taken forward <clears throat> in further events at the G8 uh, next month uh, and at the Pittsburgh summit uh, in September. There are a number of very important elements in there. There's the commitment to maintain uh, official development assistance and to continue to make progress towards the 0.7% target, which for the United Kingdom, uh, we are on track to do that by 2013. There's an important emphasis on economic growth uh, and uh, avoiding protectionism. There's an important emphasis on social safety nets for the poorest. And of course, it's the poorest countries and the most vulnerable communities who are most exposed to this economic crisis and who have had a voice at this conference. There's an important emphasis on the reform of the international institutions. And each of the international institutions has an important role to play within its own mandate in taking forward the conclusions uh, of this summit. And lastly, there's been an important focus on the climate crisis, the climate change uh, issue on which my Prime Minister Gordon Brown uh, uh, made an important speech uh, earlier today. So while this conference has uh, taken rather longer uh, to achieve than we had originally hoped, uh, we have actually achieved through a constructive process in which the European Union has played a leading role, a consensus on how to address this global crisis and it's now up to all the various institutions within their mandates to take this forward. And the most important dimension, I think, is that for the first time, the poorest countries of the world have had a chance to set out their concerns and to contribute to the global consensus uh, on the way forward. Thank you. Four countries that you've described, uh, asking that the most uh, developed nations, uh, as a, you know, uh, recruit at least one percent of their GDP for uh, development. Mm. Mm. But there was no uh, progress achieved on this uh, front uh, in this conference. Well, the uh, uh, as I say, there's been a, uh, a clear commitment to um, maintaining development assistance and to increasing it to meet the 0.7 percent target. And there's been a uh, the strongest call that I've heard from developing countries is against protectionism. Uh, now, there's been much debate uh, in the media about this, but this conference has come out clearly against further protectionism uh, and uh, to maintain uh, not just the present levels of uh, free trade, but to conclude the Doha uh, trade round, uh, which is aimed at uh, benefiting in, in particular uh, the poorest uh, and least developed countries. Um, so uh, uh, the Stimulus packages that were um, announced and uh, uh, coordinated at the London summit did contain uh, elements for uh, the poorest countries. Some say not enough. Uh, more may well need to be done on that front. Um, but I think here we have a platform for taking that forward. Developing countries and civil society that were here say that the, the IMF and the World Bank, there's too much power for the richer countries, that they mm. prefer the action to move to the GA. Do you yeah. feel that this conference has accomplished that? And as to the IFIs, do you, there's a call in this for gender and geographical balance that I think the U.S. has some problem with. Does the U.K. Uh, accept that paragraph in terms of reform of the IFIs? Uh, we, we certainly accept the paragraph on the reform of the IFIs. We've long advocated uh, the modernization of all the international institutions, uh, both in terms of their, uh, their decision-making structures and in terms of their mandates. So uh, reforming the IMF and the World Bank is as important as reforming the United Nations and other organizations. <clears throat> so we, 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 we do back that, um, and we believe that uh, giving uh, added voice to the developing countries in the global institutions will be an important, uh, an important step to take. Is there anything, is this a separate issue, no, 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 same issue? Yeah. No, 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 no. It's, this is a General Assembly backdrop, not a Security Council backdrop. Actually, it was not, I mean, there were a group of NGOs from developed nations, uh, you know, this morning held a, a news conference yeah. on the uh, 
fringes of, and they mentioned the issue of debt relief. Yeah. Again, this is another important aspect which is repeatedly, mm. you know, requested by the poorer countries, but again, it's not reflected in the final document. What's your reaction to that? Well, well, I think you will find it is reflected in the final document. I think it's paragraph 15 of the final document is clear about uh, uh, taking forward the work on debt relief. Um, actually, debt relief has been one of the great successes of the last 10 years. Uh, I don't have the figures to, my, to hand, I'm afraid, uh, but uh, uh, through the last 10 years, um, uh, and uh, notably with the advances made at the Glen Eagle Summit in 2005, uh, a, 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 a significant number of developing of least developed countries have been taken out of the of the the, the, the debt trough uh, and are able to focus their resources not on debt servicing but on development, and that's a very significant step forward. Now. Not every developing country has yet qualified. There's still some uh, uh, more work to be done. But um, I, I think the, the work on debt relief has been very important in recent years. As I say, the, the output document here in paragraph 15 uh, makes clear the, uh, uh, the importance of it. Now, there are clear rules on this. Um, and uh, the, the, uh, uh, the Paris Club and uh, the IMF and others are involved in this. Uh, and they have important roles to play. Uh, but uh, I, I think we should highlight debt relief as one of the, as one of the big achievements uh, in development in the recent decade. Any other questions? General Assembly question. About, uh, yeah. in, the, in the Fifth Committee, there's been a proposal by the EU to cut peacekeeping budgets by 2.5% across the board. Mm. It may have changed back to being only half a percent, mm. but since, as a Security Council member that sets these mandates out, mm. do, you, do you feel that the, there, there's waste in the peacekeeping missions? Why is there this attempt to cut cut the operating budgets of the peacekeeping missions? Well, the, the, the reason for that, uh, Matthew, is that over the last um, uh, uh, 10 years or so, uh, each year the peacekeeping budgets are collectively underspent by anything between 7 and 14 percent. Uh, now, in these times when everybody's budget is under uh, stress, uh, it's important not only that individual budgets should be scrutinized, but where there is an expectation of an underspend, we can therefore um, whilst we authorize people to spend up to a certain level, the expectation is the total level of spend will be less than the total amount authorized. And in these times, it makes sense to, uh, to provide less than the total uh, that's, uh, uh, that, that's set out. Uh, and, you know, the, 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 whether this is over-budgeting or underspending, either way, the, uh, the UN rarely spends up to the maximum of its peacekeeping budget. And therefore, it only makes sense to provide uh, the amount of money that is necessary. And that was what the EU proposal was about. Well, like in the Congo, in the Manu Commission, they're asking yeah. for, for money for drones. Hmm. Is it still included or is it not included? Well, that's a, I don't know the detail of the, of the budget that's been approved for Mona. I'm sorry. Uh, are you saying, therefore, Mr. Ambassador, that you, uh, it could be reasonably guaranteed that you could have a 1% or a 2% cut in total budget without having any cut in, in services or operations? Absolutely. In fact, we believe we could go further, but we wanted to take this a step at a time and demonstrate that, uh, 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 that, that it is possible without any impact on, on the mandates of these peacekeeping missions to uh, cover their, um, uh, their, their needs with uh, something less than the total sum of, their, of, their, of their, the budget that they're